the letter N prefixes chapter 68, and when we count the letter N in that chapter, we find 133. These, as you notice, are physical facts. It is not guesswork. I'm not saying, in my opinion, chapter 68 contains 133 ends. This is a physical fact. The chapter is initialed with the letter N, prefixed with the initial N, and it contains 133 ends. 133 is a multiple of 19. It equals 19 times 7. Chapter 36, for example, is prefixed with the letters Y, S. And when you count the letters Y and S in this chapter, the total is 285, or 19 times 15. How do you like that? This means every letter Y, every letter S in this chapter is counted, calculated, and harmonized with the other initial chapters. There is also an interlocking relationship between these letters because you find these letters in a number of chapters and they interlock with each other and all of them give you totals that are multiples of 19. We will find out why 19 before the end of this program. But at this point, I would like to quote for you uh, from Rabbi Judah the Pious, his writings of about a thousand years ago. And uh, it demonstrates the common denominator in all the scriptures, one and the same message, the Quran, the Gospel of Jesus, the Torah of Moses, the Psalms of David. Let me quote for you from uh, Rabbi Judah the Pious, where we find that the number 19 is the common denominator uh, in all the scriptures. Uh, here is what Rabbi Judah said 900 years ago. The people, the Jews in France, made it a custom to add in the morning prayer the words Ashrei Temimei Derech, which means blessed are those who walk the right, righteous way. And our Rabbi, the pious of blessed memory, wrote that they were completely and utterly wrong. It is all gross falsehood because there are only 19 times, here it is, there are only 19 times that the holy name is mentioned in that portion of the morning prayer. And similarly, you find the word Elohim 19 times. Similarly, you find that Israel were called sons 19 times. And there are many other examples. All these sets of 19, 19, here we go, are intric intricately interwined and they contain many secrets and esoteric meanings which are contained in more than eight large volumes. So this is just to give you an idea that the number 19 is the common denominator in all portions of the message, God's message to the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it is impossible, statistically impossible, to write a book with this kind of mathematical composition, where every letter, every word is calculated and carefully placed according to a mathematical pattern that is clearly beyond human ability. We find this mathematical pattern in God's scripture, the one and the same message in Quran and in previous scriptures I just gave you the example of, uh, from the Torah as written by Rabbi Judah the Pious. <laughs> And now we come to the big question, why 19 in the older scripture as well as in the Quran? Why is 19 the common denominator of God's message to the world from the time of Adam until now? 
And why did it have to wait? You see, when Rabbi Judah discovered the number 19 in the older scriptures, he didn't know why 19. As you recall, when I quoted him, he said there is a secret and a great esoteric meaning to the number 19. But he didn't know why. Because this question had to wait until the completion of God's message to the world by revealing the final edition, the Quran, in the Arabic language. You see, 19 is the numerical value of the word one in Arabic. And this is the whole essence of the scripture, that there is one God that we shall worship only the one God. In Arabic, the word one is written like this. It is pronounced wahid. And at the time of revelation of Quran, there were no numbers as we know them today. They used the alphabet letters as numbers. So the numbers were non-existent. This is a relatively recent invention, the numbers. So let us go to this word in Arabic, the word one or wahid, and see how the numerical value equals 19. The first letter in this word wa, of course, was six in those days. It was the letter wa and also the number six. This is the letter A, and it represents the numeral one. This is the letter ha, which represented the numeral eight. Finally, the letter D, wahid, the letter D was four. And if you add the total, 6 plus 1 is 7, 7 plus 8 is 15, 15 plus 4 is 19. So there is the total, the numerical value of the word 1 in Arabic. And now with the completion of the scriptures through the revelation of Quran, we know why 19. 19, they common denominator of the mathematical code throughout the scriptures means one. God is one. The ma what is more important than the mathematical code is the content of the message itself. Because the message being from our creator tells us who we are, where we came from, where we are going, and why we are here. What is the purpose of our life? These are the most important questions as far as any human being is concerned. And now we have the answers from the most authoritative source, the Creator Himself. Naturally, we cannot discuss all the contents of the message in one program. Hopefully, in a series of programs, we will present to you the contents of the message. But for now, let me deal with just one question. Who is God? Who is the one who created you and me? There is a specific one who created you and me and the whole universe. There is a certain one that we should know who is the omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient God who runs this universe. Who is he? The Quran describes God as following. You see, this planet Earth is part of the Milky Way galaxy. And the Milky Way galaxy is so huge that it takes 30,000 light years. If you travel at the speed of light, it will take you 30,000 years to reach the outer limit of the Milky Way galaxy, our galaxy. And our universe contains one billion galaxies, like the Milky Way, a billion trillion stars. These numbers are actual scientific numbers. The astronomers, the scientists, stopped counting at one billion galaxies in our universe, and the billion trillion stars. That's how big our universe is. Uh, we now measured 26 billion light years within 
our universe. 26,000 millions of light years within our universe. And the Quran, God tells us in Quran that there are seven universes. The billion trillion stars, the one billion galaxies, the 26 billion light years are only within the smallest and innermost of seven universes. This is how God describes the universes. You can imagine seven balls inside each other. And we live in the smallest and innermost of the seven universes. Can you imagine the size of the second universe? How about the third universe? The fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh universe. How can we describe the circumference of the seventh universe? Infinity will be the most accurate description of this, the length of the circumference of the seventh universe. And you know what? Quran describes God as holding the seven universes in his right hand. That's who God is.